Hello and welcome to today's math class. Today we have this a challenge before us here. The question is uh, 6 to the power of m minus 5 to the power of m equal to 11. And uh, yeah, we are told that m belongs to a set of uh, positive integer. Okay, so we have to look for the integer solution of this challenge and the positive one of it. Okay, now on this channel, I have uh, produced a video of this kind where uh, I solve a similar challenge of this kind here. Yeah. Okay, I check out the question here. Yeah. Okay, so this question, I actually I saw it about um, almost two years ago and the question has uh, gotten about 2.8 million views. And one of these days, I decided to scroll through the uh, comment section. Uh, I saw so many criticisms and also saw uh, so many persons that actually gave the approach I applied a uh, kudos. Okay, I'm going to uh, give a better explanation of some of the uh, steps I skipped in that video also. And if you've not watched that video, okay, it's going to uh, display. Yeah, that is the video showing up here now. Okay, you can uh, click on it and uh, watch it to uh, see what I actually did here. And uh, uh, I want to believe I'm um, one of the first persons to uh, bring that challenge on the internet, sorry, on YouTube, okay, on YouTube. And uh, since then, many persons have copied that same approach. And from all the criticism, I have not really seen uh, someone who solved that same challenge using uh, an approach different from the one I applied, okay. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, solve this here uh, using similar approach. Uh, to the uh, first one I uh, solve. Now, if you check out this question here, you'll discover that we just uh, make guessing you can get the answer to this. Because here we have m here, here we have m here, and so we can decide to uh, take the value of m ranging from zero to any other number because here we they said m is uh, a set of positive integer okay so if we decide to put a zero here put zero here that will give us one minus one which will give us zero and that is not 11 and so we increase it to one so if it's here is one and here is one this will give us six minus uh, our five and that will give us one but here we have 11. What if I decide to put in 2 in here? That will give us 6 to the power of 2, which is 36, and 5 to the power of 2, which is 25. And 25 away from um, 36, that will give you 11. And so 2 is the value of m that will actually satisfy this challenge here. But in case of entrance exam, where you are made to show your solving on how to get that value, 2. How do you go about that? That is the essence of this video clip. All right, so let's take our solution. Now, the first thing we're going to do here is this. Let's put out the question we have here, 6 to the power of our m minus 5 to the power of m equals to 11, right? Good. Now, uh, yeah, I'm having a minus sign here, right? Okay, so what I did in that formal question, uh, that formal video, is that I try to raise this uh, power and this power to a particular number that will actually lead us to a special algebraic identity. And the thing I thought of, or the identity I thought of, is that of difference of two squared. Okay, we only have difference of two cube, right? So if I decide to raise this to, let's take here our six to the power of m or raised to the power of one, then minus five to the power of six uh, m raised to the power of one equal to 11. This has not really changed a thing. Now, this one can equally be expressed as two all over two, or three all over three, or four all over four, five all over five, right? Good. Now, I raise this to, 2 all over 2. In order for me to get my difference of 2 squared from this place, and it works out. And after solving using 2 all over 2, I tried for the one of 3 all over 3. It didn't work out. I tried the one of 4 all over 4. It worked out, okay? It worked out, but it, it stressed me in getting the answer, okay? I, I passed through so many steps in getting the answer, but I still got the actual answer to it when I put in 4 all over 4 here. Yeah. Okay, 5 all over 5, because of, to get the um, algebraic identity that has to uh, do with the power of 5, we also prolong the solving. And so, 
I decided to raise this to 2 all over 2. Okay, so this is the same thing as 6 to the power of m or raised to the power of 2 all over 2, which is the same thing as 1. Then I do the same thing here of 5 to the power of m or raised to our 2 all over 2 equal to 11. The question you may ask again is that why am I not raising this to 1, I mean a 2 all over 2? Mind you, what I did here has not actually affected anything. According to the law of equation, it says that whatever you do to the left hand side, you must do to the right hand side. Like I said earlier, 2 all over 2 is 1. So it didn't change anything here. Okay, good. So from here, I apply a simple law in indices which says that if you have your k to the power of your m, then times n, this is equal to your k to the power of m, or in bracket raised to n. I can interchange the position here. So if I switch in this inside, this is going to give k to the power of n, or raised to the power of m. So this is a simple law in indices, right? So I can shift in this inside leaving this outside why am i doing that mind you we are working towards a thing which is the difference of two square okay we know or we have an idea of the difference of two square which says that if you have let's take um if you have x uh, to the power of two minus y to the power of two this is equal to your x plus y close bracket bracket x minus y close bracket this is what we call difference of two square okay so that is what we are working towards to bring out and so i'm going to multiply this to give me six to the power of my m all over two all raised to the power of two minus my five to the power of m all over two all raised to the power of two equal to 11. all right so with this we now have our difference of two square here, which is what we have in here now. But before that, to avoid the writing of six raised to the power of m all over two and m uh, five raised to the power of five all over m, I want to do a simple substitution here. Okay, so I will say here, let, let six to the power of m all over two be equal to, let me say, p and my five, to the power of m all over 2 to be q. So if I have that to be so, what am I going to do here? So I can put this in here, put this in here. So this now implies that my p to the power of 2 minus my q to the power of 2 is equal to 11. Okay, so what we do next here now is to go ahead and apply this rule here. So if we apply this rule, so we'll have our p minus, uh, let's take plus our q, close bracket, bracket p minus our q, close bracket is equal to 11. Now we have the left hand side, sorry, the right hand side of the equation to be um, an odd number, right? So this is an odd number. And yeah, we are having p plus q. We have to look for the factors of 11. 11 has just two factors, which is one and 11 itself, which makes it a prime number. So if we are to rewrite this as our one times 11, this, is it going to be equal to one? Or this will be equal to 11? We just have to decide, okay, good. Because since we don't have even number in the midst of uh, 1 and uh, 11 there, so we just have to think of the one that will be of the higher value and the one that will be of the lesser value. So if you look here, we are having P here, we are having P here, we are having Q here, we are having Q here. So this is the sign we have in between. If you check carefully, if we are having P plus Q and P minus Q, this is summation. So the summation of these two quantities will be far greater or higher than the subtraction we have in here. Why? Because we have P plus Q greater than our P minus Q. So if it is true, then this we take this and this we take this. And so this now implies that we're going to have our P plus our Q will be equal to 11. Let's take this equation one and we have our p minus our q will be equal to one. Let's take this equation 
two. Now, again, because we are looking for just the uh, positive integer or the integer solution of this challenge here, that's why, if not, there are other fractions we can multiply together to give us 11. But because of what we are asked to look for, that's why we restricted ourselves to only 1 and 11. Okay. Now, from here, this is the simultaneous equation. So, we can solve this by either subtracting equation 1 from equation 2 or adding equation 1 from equation 2. But there are laws in solving this. Okay? The law says that when you have this to be plus and you have here to be minus, then you add. But if you have here to be minus, minus, you subtract. If you have here to be plus, plus, you subtract. Okay, so since this is plus, minus, we want to add. If we add this, this, this will leave the system and we are left with 12. 2p is equal to, we add this together, we give us uh, 12. Divide by 2, we divide by 2. Cancel, cancel out. Here we have 1, here we have 6. So we have p is equal to uh, 6. So we've gotten the value of our p to be 6 already. Going ahead to solve for the value of q is of no use. Why? Because we can substitute this value into this substitution we made here and we get the value of m from there. And if we get the value of m from here, the value of m is the same thing we're going to get from here if we go ahead to solve for the value of q from this place here. Okay, so with this, let's put this into this equation. So we now recur, we recur that our 6 to the power of m all over 2 is equal to rp. So substituting this is going to give us 6 to the power of m all over 2 is equal to p is what? 6. Easy. Now the base number on the left hand side is same to that of the base number on the right hand side. And mind you, 6 could be written as 6 to the power of 1. So since the bases are the same and they are greater than 0, then what happened? This, this leaves the system. And if this leaves the system, then we can equate the exponent. So we're going to have our m all over 2 is equal to 1. Multiply both sides by our 2. This will give us m is equal to 2. So m equal to 2 is the solution to this, as I said earlier on. Okay, so this brings us to the end of today's math class. If you have any question with regard to this, drop it in the comment section. If you have a different method, a different approach to solving a challenge of this kind, also drop it in the comment section so that online math TV can equally learn from you. Thank you for being there. Bye. What don't we see you in our next class? Keep winning.